And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. I'm, <coughs> welcome to this morning at Red Brick House. Tonight, I'm back here at my house. And um, I've got some work I've been working on in the workshop and things. And got to pick up some stuff to take back down to the Red Brick House. And... Um, want to bring you up to speed with something that we've speculated about uh, a couple of things actually because we we talked about jerry jones having a belief that dak prescott can win a super bowl and literally having a notepad that was basically with just scribble scrabble uh, just scribble scrabble at you know he's he was talking at the league meetings of course you know jerry jones he's an open book he's gonna tell you all kinds of things and all that so he basically said, you know, Dak Prescott, you know, we have faith in Dak and, you know, we believe he can win a Super Bowl. He's one of a handful of guys that can do that. What we also learned, too, is that it's looking like Tyler Smith, who was originally drafted to be the heir apparent. Let's be clear here. He was drafted to be the heir apparent to Tyron Smith. Now, we have a lot of people who it's, it's funny because no matter what happens, no matter what happens to people, nobody's going to be happy with the Cowboys. We drafted Tyler Smith to be the heir apparent for Tyron Smith. For the last few years, people have been saying it's time to get rid of Tyron Smith. They finally get rid of Tyron Smith, and now all of a sudden, man, the Cowboys are stupid. They didn't. They should have kept Tyron Smith. It's like, wait a minute, you you before were saying get rid of that guy. In the same way, people were saying get rid of Zeke. Get rid of Zeke, man. Zeke, yeah, it's too expensive and all this, that, and the other. They get rid of him, and they say, we'll bring him back. It's like you need to pick a side on these things because you can't have it both ways. So what I had said when we did our live stream earlier, and shout out to Angry Cowboy Fan who joined us, of course, Game Time Brian, as well as many of you channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's because of you guys. And all of you subscribers that we are here at 100,000 and continuing to grow and bring you all the news as bad as it may be on the Cowboys. Um, we were talking about the Cowboys for me in my mind is they're fortunate that they have Tyler Smith who played tackle his first year and has played lights out at guard when Tyron Smith has been healthy. So he's experienced and his great in both positions. Now, he's been fantastic as a guard, but I think he's going to be fantastic wherever he goes. So I, I'm not worried about that. And this is where Biotis leaving, of course, Tyron Smith leaving, and you have two really good offensive linemen, and one we hope to bounce back in uh, Terrence Steele, another year removed from the ACL injury. The good thing with Tyler Smith is you can put him out of tackle, which means if you have a great guard or a great center that's there, you can draft either one. Or if a great tackle happens to fall there, you can take him. And so you're not slotted in saying, I've got to get a guard or i got to get a center. You can literally take the best player available for the offensive line. In fact, you could end up plugging in your young guys, and so we're just going to take the best player available. If, if that's a running back, which I don't think there's any running backs that are going to have first-round grades. But remember, you're drafting late in the first round. Or it could be that you decide to move back and try and create more opportunities for the team. So this actually would give you flexibility of having Tyler Smith go back. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting, and this is not the first time that we've heard this before, is... Basically, the Cowboys were saying that they couldn't match the incentives that they put on for Tyron Smith. You know, remember a couple of years ago when we got rid of Amari Cooper and traded him literally for a potted meat sandwich, um, a fifth-round pick? 
We said basically we couldn't couldn't keep him. And then Cedric Wilson went, and then they said, you know, we can't, we don't have the money to pay him. And for a while there, our punter, who was a pro bowler, for a while there, they were saying we didn't have money to sign him. So we literally let everybody go because they said we didn't have money. Now, their money issues are of their own making. And I keep saying to my brethren out there, all my YouTubers, to keep up the content and keep the pressure on the Joseph. Keep it up. Don't give them a pass. You can do anything you want to do if you want to do it. You know, Stephen Jones, you keep hearing that, you know, you got to build for the future. Wait a minute. Haven't we been doing that for going on 30 years here? When is the future going to be here that you're building all the stuff up for? Because I have seen that this is what's crazy. And this is where you realize they don't know what they're doing. We have been in cap problems and blaming the cap since the days of early Tony Romo. From the times of Marion Barber, where we overpaid him and Miles Austin and things like that. This is not a new problem. Everybody wants to look and say, it's all Dak's fault because he's sucking up the money. Bro, wake up. Wake up. We were restructuring Tony Romo's contract over and over and over and over again, as well as Tyron Smith's contract over and over and over again, as well as D-Laws, as well as Zeke Elliott's. The reason why, and Dak Prescott, the reason Dak Prescott's contract is at $59 million is because they only paid him on the cap 17, 19, and 26. You ended up backloading all this contract. It's not that he's getting $15 million, million every year. That's the totality of borrowing money. And see, if any of you have done a payday loan or, you know, a, a, a title loan on your car, you understand that the shit balloons up and at some point you got to pay it all or lose everything. And that's where the Cowboys are. They got $16 million in dead money. We're sitting here talking about, well, Dak Prescott, you know, he's got he's too expensive. Well, Michael Gallup wasn't at $11 million a year with a torn ACL. He wasn't too expensive. Zeke Elliott, after four years in the NFL, that, that $90 million, he wasn't too expensive? That you, you're still paying him? Yeah, today, right now, $6 million. Tyra Smith, not on the team, $6 million. Boss Man Fat, not on the team, costing you money. When you screw the pooch on bad contracts that you're overpaying when they're there, you're leaving dead money when they're gone. And that is the real issue. And it's a damn shame that you're literally saying to somebody who gave everything on the field that we just couldn't pay you. Sorry, bro. So I don't know if this means that they're rebuilding. Because we've been here before where we looked at it and said, oh, they're setting up Mike McCarthy for failure. And um, resetting the clock. Only having them to compete the next year. There you go, people. Your guess is as good as mine. And I will see you soon. Peace.